Inflation is here and people need to prepare for it. If the government was to say to you, OK, you have £10,000 in the bank, we're going to tax you 40% and take 4000 people would be ratting in the streets. But if you inflate it to that degree, people don't see that it's the same thing. People have this idea that that's my money in the bank. It's not. Should that bank become insolvent, you will be given shares of an insolvent bank. Currency represents money, but we have been fooled into believing that currency is money. They always fail. Every fiat currency, there's been thousands, everyone fails. This current one is failing. Hello, Melissa, and very welcome to the first of our emergency broadcasts. Today, we're going to be covering some essential topics on finance. We may stray into other areas as well, but you're very welcome. And uh, perhaps for the audience, you'd like to give us maybe one or two minutes background on where you're coming from and what your concerns are as we're moving into this particular age. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, my background, I actually um, come from a perspective that the lockdowns are economic lockdowns rather than medical lockdowns. I did study economics for A-level. My degree is actually in theology. I did theology at Trinity. I suppose that furnished me with the ability to be more of a critical thinker. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put much credence into what I learned in either. I find that most of what um, I've learned came from independent research. So my concern right now would be the economic aspects of what's going on right now. I think you and a lot of other people would be concerned as well. And I think there is a, an underlying feeling that uh, we're not being told the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth here by our respective governments. So if this, uh, if this situation that we're going for, we're going through here is a smokescreen, then how did we get here? What, what's happened with the whole finances? I mean, we were okay, weren't we? Surely up until about five, 10, 15 years ago. Why do you think it's going down to a critical point now? Um, we're, we really weren't okay from um, when the dollar, which is the reserve currency, came off the gold standard. There was nothing to tether it to. So um, they were forced off of the gold standard really because they were printing beyond and France called them out on it and sent in a battleship to go and get their gold and Nixon pulled it off the gold standard. So there's nothing, um, the money is backed by nothing or it's not money, it's currency. It's backed by absolutely nothing. Um, that has created this debt-based system that in truth collapsed in 2008. This all should have happened really around then, but they managed to reinflate the balloon what i would explain to people is it's like a hot air balloon that a hole was torn in it in 2008 and they managed to reinflate it with qe um and that what, came what's qe quantitative easing um printing money into the economy to try and plug the hole um and who, who prints the money is it different governments is it central banks yes, it? that would come from the central banks that they loan money they, there's an ability it sounds insane but there's an ability that they can create money out of nothing and loan it to the government who pay them back with interest. Yeah, I think the obvious question there is why would a government use a private institution to do that rather than do it themselves? I There's cannot, got to be people asking the question. I, that is the question. It sounds insane, um, but I guess they just handed over the financial aspect to the central banks. The central banks originally, they're, they're really only supposed to um, regulate the commercial banks mm -hmm. but the issue now is that in August of 2019 um, before this pandemic um, the central banks decided to go direct there was a meeting at Jackson's Hole that's where like economists and bankers meet they decided to go direct central banks were going to give you a, a digital currency they were going to bypass the commercial banks one month later, there was a crisis in the repo market where that's where the, the current QE really started in September of 2019. There's, it's, an un, it's an overnight um, <coughs> money market. If you imagine, it's like a pawn shop where they will um, give collateral t treasuries to the central bank 
with a repurchase agreement that at an interest rate of about 2% and they lend between each other. That market seized um, in 2019 and the central bank had to start printing the money then to the tune of I think 50 to 100 million per night. They could not plug that hole. One month later you have event 201. Mm. Then you have um, the pandemic. Let me just let me just interject there because some people are going to be saying, well, what's event 201? I would say for anybody listening to this now, it's critical at this stage to do mm -hmm. your own research. Don't just take what we're saying as gospel. Don't take what you're saying as gospel. Do your own research, whether it's event 201, whether it's the creation of the Federal Reserve, whatever it is, please don't take our word for it. Do your own research. I think you'd agree with that. Absolutely, because you'll find that it's not federal and it's not a reserve when you, you do that. And mm. with Event 201, the reason that that is so critical, um, the simulation was so accurate and there has been another simulation from the World Economic Forum in 2020. It was um, cyber attacks and the current one, Cyber Polygon, is um, attack, cyber attacks on the supply chain. So if you take the accuracy of the 2019 and 2020, where there have been cyber attacks, there's been cyber attacks on um, the health service in the south, the government here, the um, pipeline, the GBS, the food supply in America, there has been huge cyber attacks. So yes, absolutely. definitely bear that in mind. Have a look at the three simulations because they, they have quite accuracy in what they're reporting. I think as well, there has to be a boogeyman. These attacks that are coming are not by the people we think that yeah. are attacking us. So they have to have a boogeyman, whether it's Russia, whether it's North Korea, whoever. That's why there's the perpetual creation of this enemy that we mustn't let get too strong because they can blame it all on them. Exactly. That's it was it's terrorists. Um, viruses now the next one is the world is um it's not even they had to change it that it's not actually heating up now because there's actually a grand solar minimum so having to change that there's just mm. climate change it's not global well, warming has changed absolutely. yeah and it does not feel like it's warming up today i can tell you no it you does know we've had a drop really. in 15 degrees over yeah, a few days it's really you know, that's strange. not normal yeah, really You know, we don't well. want to stray into yeah. weather manipulation today. We want to try and keep ourselves on track mm -hmm. on the finances. But I think for another day, we will definitely cover mm -hmm. weather manipulation, etc. where most people think that's not possible, but it's very possible and it's very real. Well, Lyndon Johnson came out um, and that was, he was followed on from Kennedy and he said, control the weather, control the world. And as far as I'm aware, didn't China admit to it during the Olympics that there were, was it Mercury there were? sanding up to freeze the clouds. No so surprises there. It's always a conspiracy theory, but when it appears in mainstream media, it's um, it's fine then. But that's that's all been admitted. That's mm, yeah. I mean, if you come back to, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember which of the whether it was a Rockefeller or a Rothschild. Forgive me, I can't remember. But one of them said, "Give me control of a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes their mm -hmm. laws." Once they've the got control chance. of the money supply, mm -hmm. the, the, the illusion of choice that we have with governments of saying, well, I'm going to vote Labour, I'm going to vote um, uh, Conservative, I'm going to vote Republican, I'm going to vote Democrat, gives us, the people, the illusion of choice. Mm -hmm. We can't quite see beyond to these people who are controlling. They are the puppet masters. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And um, people have, they don't really understand the concept of money. Money is goods and services in the economy and your labour. Currency represents money, but we have been fooled into believing that currency is money and they're printing money out of nothing, especially right now, the money printed, there's been um, between 25 and 40% of all money in creation has been printed in this past 15 months. But- um, That's a lot. The, nah, that doesn't, you can't huge. print houses, you can't print um, cars, there's no, that's in no production. And that's where the inflation, and money creation is inflation. People think inflation is an increase in prices. That's the consequence of inflation. 
So meanwhile, while they're doing this, um, money's worth more where it enters the market, the Cantillion effect. So where it's coming in to the market, um, they're buying up the a lot of properties. I know that BlackRock currently own, I think, 53% of um, the asset-based mortgages in America. They're mm -hmm. also buying up the properties. Um, Lloyds here have decided that they're going to become private landlords. There's no politicians talking about how immoral this is. <coughs> but they're, they're buying up all the assets because the fiat currency money game, fiat currency is basically, it's money backed by nothing. It's on authority of the government that it's worth something. This, um, but I'd be right in saying that the word, because I remember looking at this years ago, the word fiat is Latin mm -hmm. and it means let it be so. Mm -hmm. In other words, it is money and we're, it has we're value. Telling you. Because we tell you it has mm -hmm. value. But it has, has no, no intrinsic, intrinsic value. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, so that, that system now, they always fail. Every fiat currency, there's been thousands, everyone fails. This current one is failing. What I see them doing right now is printing money out of nothing. They're giving us an amount of it um, to pacify us so that we stay at home while they buy up all the actual assets. Mm -hmm. We're in a very dangerous situation for me right now, I would say that. I think I would wholeheartedly agree. And I remember when you know i have i have six children and when they were growing up i used to sort of give them a clip around the ear and say do you think money grows on trees mm -hmm. and they would say well sure where does it come from then dad and for years i really didn't understand the answer to that question mm -hmm. so can you elaborate on where money comes from initially we, we know that central banks qa quantitative ease and they print money mm -hmm. but can you just go down the path of the private banking system and how and they bring the money into creation? Yeah. okay there's I think Richard Werner um, looked into this because there's there's a few theories of where money comes from, like in terms of debt, and um, because ninety seven percent of all the money in the economy right now has been generated from debt, there's only three percent that is signed money. So he there's whether it's are loans created from money that's actually in the bank that they're lending out money that they actually have, or is it fractional reserve lending? Fractional reserve lending will be when you put £100 into the bank, <clears throat> they have to hold, say, 1% of that, but then they can lend out £99, but then that goes into another account and they can lend out 99% of that, so that £100 can actually be lent out to the tune of £10,000. Mm -hmm. But he looked further into it and he actually went and borrowed €200,000 from a bank and did a forensic analysis of their balance sheet and it proves that, that that money was literally created. You created that promissory note and it was created there and then on that debt. That oh, money did so. not, yeah, it did not exist before that. He came out with that in 2013, I think is when he did it and he printed the paper on 2014. And who was that again? Richard Werner. Richard was, Werner. Yeah, one of the most downloaded documents. Um, very, mm. very interesting. And the Bank of England came out and, after that and said, actually, oh, yeah, um, yeah, we know that, yeah, that's how. But... Do um, you see, coming back to monetary creation, currency, uh, money velocity, we've heard all these terms before. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read something called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars? No. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars goes into the whole banking system and how that works energetically. Mm -hmm. So you'll have banks, as in a river bank, mm -hmm. which controls the flow of money mm -hmm. so the river bank controls the flow so the bank controls the flow of money and it puts all these scenarios together um it's a very deep you can find it on the internet silent weapons for quiet wars people can google that they can find the pdf of it mm -hmm. but it's very very clever at matching the energetic control system that they want to put in to the banking system and matching those words currency flow current mm -hmm. flow banks etc it's a mind-blowing document so but it got linked you, we're straying yes, into yeah. the whole mm -hmm. maritime admiralty type mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. common law stuff which is for another day yeah i'm just mentioning that so people can look at that in advance you know before we do a podcast on perhaps silent weapons for quiet wars for example yeah so well this is why the asset prices like this is why house prices are so um high right now because for a bank to lend for a commercial bank to lend um, for a house, it's it's pretty much a guaranteed loan. You, 
you're making money from nothing out of the interest. Um, we are in a non-productive society because there's no, they don't lend to small businesses because there's that risk there. So they have created these asset bubbles by mm -hmm. their actions and what they're doing. And I always find it um, interesting that people have this idea, well, I bought my house for 150,000 and now it's worth 400,000. It's the same house. I never, unless you've, I understand if you've done work to it, but if you haven't done anything to it, you do not, you you are not any richer. It's this con that you actually are more wealthy because it's now worth 400,000. You're not. It's the same house, same thing that if pr house prices, if, say there's a massive crash tonight and your house is worth 400,000 and it's only worth 40,000 and people are devastated. It's the same house. It's just that we have been forced into this. People are buying properties for investments. We've been forced into this. Rather than a home. Yeah, rather than mm -hmm. a home. Yep. And people think your home is an asset. Your home is not an asset. You have to live somewhere. Can I just touch on something that we discussed earlier on there, Melissa? And it was the dynamics of a narcissistic relationship. You mentioned that in some respects, we have a narcissistic bunch of leaders in, in, in Westminster, in Stormont, etc who believe they're doing the right thing. Do you think a lot of people are just blindly following along because they have a misplaced trust in their government and their MLAs and their elected representatives and they're scared of asking questions? Is that what you mean by a narcissistic relationship? No, I think that they're flat out being manipulated. Um, there is like this, you, what you are and aren't allowed to do and the idea that it's for your own good. Hmm. Well. I'm an adult now, so I can decide, even if it's going out to bars and stuff, as an adult, I can decide, well, I have, maybe have COPD and, you know, around flu season, it's maybe best for you not to get a flu. So you would say, I'm not going to go out. Mm -hmm. As an adult, you make those decisions and you accept the repercussions of those decisions. It's this idea that they care for you. They do not care for you. They're, and you're being blindly led into this concept that they're doing it for your best interests. And then you believe them, even though all of the data shows that we are being lied to. Um, there is wordplay in the, like, the cases rather than hospital admin, uh, admissions. Um, there's so much manipulation going on, even the, the way, if you go into Tesco's, I feel like I'm in a Darren Brown, the heist show. Mm. It's yeah. just, um, yeah. it's, it's the visual, the audio, it's relentless it's the whole way around. And now when you yeah. are aware of it, you um, are going in there going, <laughs> but other than that, you wouldn't even notice it. But it's constantly you're being programmed all the time, uh, and yeah. then that's being abused in order for you, for them to control you. Because yes. a narcissistic relationship is a relationship where one person controls the other person, yes. and they do it by manipulation. Yes, I'm just thinking there that there was a there probably still is a poster in East Belfast. I think it was David Irvine, the PUP mm. councillor, who said, "Those people who do not remember the history are doomed to repeat it." And I say that in the context of trusting the governments. Your government wouldn't lie to you, but they don't know their history. They don't know that governments around the world have lied consistently. For yeah. whatever reasons, they do lie. You know, we can go back to World War One, World War Two. we can go back to Vietnam War, etc., etc. So if people don't know their history, they are doomed to repeat it. I heard Because they are so scared of asking yeah. questions because of, once again, that fear of rejection. If, if you were a, let's say you were Sir Geoffrey Donaldson sitting there, leader of the DUP now. And Sir Geoffrey, lovely guy, lovely chap, I have a lot of time for him. But if he was sitting there now and I was asking him questions, is he going to answer me honestly? Or is he going to follow the narrative and lie to me? I don't know the answer to that. Oh, I Does would, it stop us talking to them? Mm. I would say they would absolutely filter what they say. Um, Possibly. Because they're so afraid of... Um, being judged and having that rejection from a part of the... They don't seem, though, to... I suppose it's the majority um, of the community that they don't want to be rejected from because there doesn't seem to be anybody listening to the people who don't want to proceed with medical apartheid. 
Hmm. Well, if you take it that we did have 5,000 plus on the streets in Belfast last Saturday, mm -hmm. who's going to listen to us? Is it going to be the SDLP? Is it going to be the DUP? Is it going to be the TUV? There's got to be somebody out there that says, hang on, these people have got a point. We need to listen to them. That's potentially something that's good. I'm not saying it's definitely good. Yeah. I'm saying it's potential. We have to keep our options open here, I think. Yeah, we need. I suppose we do need um, a voice. And again, if if they obviously there's um, more than a few that are questioning the narrative, mm -hmm. um, albeit silently. If they had the belief that there was people that were going to support them, they may be more vocal about it. And prior to Saturday, it was. And there was only an awareness of a couple of hundred people. Mm -hmm. But now when you see Saturday and there's thousands and that number is going to continue to build, especially as these passports are being pushed on people. Um, what, what I find is that the people who are saying, no, they don't want to partake in this um, clinical trial, um, they're now really digging their heels in because they're getting suspicious at the level of coercion and manipulation and you can't mm -hmm. partake in society unless you... You're an outcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I just bring us back to finances just for a minute? And we discussed this earlier on about um, expecting the best and preparing for the worst. So we have a positive expectancy that things will be okay eventually. This is just going to be a bumpy period in human history. But to prepare for the worst when it comes to finances, can you just sort of re-mention what you said about the precious metals, about the crypto, et cetera, et cetera, and what, you know, you're not a financial advisor, you'll be the first person to say that. Mm -hmm. But what would you do personally just to prepare? Well, for me, I would not, I do not have anything in the bank. If you have money in the bank, there's a few issues with the bank. Um, there is the bail-in laws that come out in 2014 that should the, the bank collapse, your money will be taken, it's, your money is deposited into the bank, you're actually putting it in loan to the bank. So they own that money. People have this idea that that's my money in the bank. It's not. You have loaned them that money and that's why you get like, even though it's not, 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 not one percent interest, it's still on loan. It's no longer your own money. No. The minute so, it changes hands, it belongs to the them. Bank. That's, that's provable, isn't it? Yeah. So when should that bank become insolvent you will be given shares of an insolvent bank in exchange for that Wonderful. money they have it insured up to eighty-five thousand. they actually only hold i think less than half percent of that and even at that you have to realize that um the government themselves are on the verge of insolvency the oh, country is way beyond yeah so how are they going to pay you what are they backing it with um Nothing. No, it's magic fairy money. Yeah. So, <laughs> so precious metals. So silver, that would gold. be. I would absolutely get it out of the bank. I think you need to get away from the concept that money in the bank is savings. Um, at least have it. Any currency has lost like ninety nine point nine percent of its original value. When, so mm. th they are being inflated away prior to this like forty percent inflation. So start saving in precious metals instead like you could you could use any tangible asset i mean it can be some people buy watches some people buy um whiskies anything that's tangible precious metals there's uh, thousands of years of history you can look into it what a, an ounce of gold would buy a hundred years ago an ounce of gold would buy you now so they are safe ha haven assets they're not investments mm -hmm. um it will protect your savings um, it's like finding a safe car park for your car. You need to find a safe place for it. Yeah. Relatively safe. Yes. Nothing's 100%. But. That's going to um, at least perform the same as inflation, if not outperform mm -hmm. inflation, because your money is being inflated away. Inflation is, it's a tax, really. They're, yeah. they're taxing, they're taking away your purchasing power. Mm -hmm. And if you were to, if the government were to say, okay, so say that... Uh, it's been inflated by 40%. There's 40% creation of all the money that's been created, 40% has created in the past 15 months. If the bank was to go in, if the government was to say to you, okay, you have 10,000 pounds in the bank, we're going to tax you 40% and take 4,000. People would be ratting in the streets. 
But if you inflate it to that degree, people don't see that it's the same thing. That's kind of like the boiling frogs. Yeah. It's happening so slowly that people don't see it. It's like the tiger that creeps up very, very slowly. Mm. If it comes fast, you're going to run away. Um, it comes slowly on you, it's got you. But that's the thing, it goes slowly until it goes really fast. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're in danger now. They did, they tried to say that inflation was transitory. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Fed Chair Powell came out and said, it, they asked him what the definition of transitory is. Now, most people's um, definition is it'll come and go. What he's saying is, oh, it's going to rise, but it'll just, it'll stay and then it'll just rise at the um, normal 2%. Mm -hmm. But that's just again putting it in the never never. Um, yeah. It was transitory to begin with, don't worry about it. Inflation is here and people need to prepare for it. And that's where I would say anything tangible. I would not tell people to get cryptocurrency because it's a gamble for me that could pay off really well or you could lose everything. It's, it's in its infancy. The sure. blockchain is here to stay. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it is in its infancy, so it is kind of like the do it could be like the dot com bubble again. And it does do well if you take Bitcoin for example. Bitcoin does do boom bubble bust, boom bubble bust. I think it's dropped by eighty percent three times. Hmm. The latest correction was sixty five percent. It has a mechanism to stabilize quantity but right now it doesn't have a mechanism to stabilize value so it's difficult to use it right now as a currency until that is achieved so there will be but they're now they're coming out with their brit coin um, mm -hmm. fed Saw coin mm -hmm. um and that will be they'll just wait for a crisis in crypto and then put that forward as the solution sure. and the enemy of cryptocurrency is regulation Okay, that's very good. Um, what about if we just finish off with, we're talking about being prepared. Um, mm -hmm. What about food supplies, fresh water, et cetera, et cetera? Well, that's back to if we, um, if you remember what we were talking about at the start, the event 201 and then the cyber um, attack. That was the WEF simulation in 2020 was a cyber attack. The 2021 was cyber attack on the supply chain. There is obviously issues with supply because of the workforce. Mm -hmm. Everything was shut down and then you had that issue in the Suez Canal, which I find very interesting. I'm always curious about information that's thrown into my lap. And that was memed to death. Mm -hmm. My 19-year-old daughter, who knows nothing about any of this, not interested, came to me and told me about that. Mm -hmm. That's your warning. Um, so that it's in your psychology that you will be aware. Yeah, absolutely. There is 90% of all supply is done through the sea. And that's why the Suez Canal was so interesting. I, the way I explain it to people is you get car insurance and you hope that you don't get in an accident. You get house insurance, you hope your house doesn't burn down. So when you know that there is issues with supply, you should absolutely have... Um, at the very least, three months' supply of food. Mm -hmm. Because we all seen what happened last March. Two days and everything Toilet could rolls. be gone. Yeah. That was the first thing that people went for. They came out with shopping trolleys full of toilet rolls. I mean, for yeah. crying out loud, people. It was, it was told to them for some reason. I don't know where that came from because, I mean, it's even we things like soap. Because should the system collapse, should there be a cyber attack on banking? which is, um, there's huge potential for mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. it, like this current pandemic, it could be very uh, advantageous to the economy should there be a crisis in banking. So say there is, that would mean that there'd be no transactions. So you would not be able to, they would just close the supermarkets, they would just shut them up because they can't use the transactions. Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking about the the most vulnerable in our society, you know, the pensioners who rely on getting their money out of the post office or whether it's electronically or by cash at the post office, the hundreds of thousands of millions of people who rely on their benefits payment to mm -hmm. come in to buy food, etc. If that suddenly stops, ooh, yeah. then we're looking at a major, major incident. That's Those that, people that's won't chaos. have a lot of money put by. No, and they don't. We are kind of the first generation who doesn't have 
food stores, like larders. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, prior to this, you would always have had a good little bit because people Something didn't go the to larder, yeah. they didn't go to the supermarket. Like my mum would have went to the supermarket um, once a week, possibly even twice, once every two weeks, and got everything that you needed. Now we're kind of going because we're out and about and working, and you're going every day or you're going out to eat a lot. Especially in America, in America you open the very little in their cupboards because they eat out so much. Yeah. So if everything closes down, I keep on saying, you're better looking at it than looking for it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't use it, there is plenty of food banks that are crying out for food. So if it's coming up to the best before date, donate it. It's not going to ever. And if you like I, my insurance, my car insurance just come in there at four hundred and um, twenty four pounds. That's down. Um, so. That's I mean, because I, you're such a good safe driver, obviously. That's very, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I pay, I'm i paying that out. I don't even think about it. But if if you were to say, well, get £400 worth of long, like long life foods, uh-huh. I'd be like, no way, I'm not wasting £400, but I can do that for insurance. So That's because we're not quite in crisis mode. That's because it's easier to wait until we're in a crisis rather than prepare for a crisis. But you're better being um, mm. a year too early than a day too late because if the supermarkets go empty, there is no food. Mm-hmm. And that's when it is that people are fighting against each other for the food. Indeed. Um, well, look, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. I thank you tremendously for coming in to see us and to share some of your experience. I think it's wonderful that you've done that today and hopefully we'll reach out to some people. This will be the first of many mm-hmm. podcasts that we're putting together. So um, I'd just like to say thank you, Melissa, very much for coming in. Thank you. God Thanks bless you. Invite. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Watch and listen for free on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can also follow us on Telegram and Facebook for more information.